So thank you for opportunity to speak. And uh, uh, we will present uh, executable SysML modeling with SysML and uh, specifically interface between descriptive and analytical models. So this interface is very popular in general, but uh, you know, there is a lot of uh, possibilities to integrate them. And we will do the overview and then we'll show the demo. So I'm the chief MBSC solution uh, architect, uh, spent 15 uh, years at uh, No Magic, now uh, part of the DSOS system. And uh, I spent 10 years in R&D, uh, writing requirements, visions, doing analysis, and now three years uh, doing uh, solutions, uh, pretty much workshops, at, uh, consulting training here in the US. <clears throat> so I, I wanted to start with the slide from the uh, previous uh, conference, as GPL uh, MBSE conference, uh, and uh, Chris Schreiber from uh, Lockheed Martin Space uh, showed the MBSC maturity model. So this maturity model shows that uh, actually we have the models uh, for many years, right? Uh, this ad hoc uh, models, it's uh, pretty much uh, the models which are not connected, uh, maybe not standard based, you know, Modelica could be uh, standard still, but, <coughs> you know, not, not connected models. Uh, and then uh, the second abstraction, uh, second maturity level could be the models which are actually standard based. When we write requirements, we describe them in the model, and now we can give those as a single system, right, requirements in the model. And then the last, next level, now we increase the rigor in the model. Now we make this model executable. And to, if it is the language as SysML in which we describe the model, the good thing is that this language could be interpreted in the formal way, part of that language we can execute and uh, test that system is executed as we expected, uh, do model-based testing, uh, uh, do analysis, uh, and we will talk a little bit ab about this, but uh, specifically we will talk about this uh, next maturity level when we integrate uh, other models uh, in Simulink, in Modelica, through our FMU functional mockup unit. Uh, we are leveraging existing interfaces and standard based interfaces to get that integration, right? And then uh, what we could achieve, we could optimize, we could make patterns of the work and we could do, do optimization. That could be the highest uh, maturity level. So we will uh, touch this uh, interface point. Uh, you, you might know this uh, uh, slide. It is a very popular representation of SysML in the context of the other disciplines, requirements, and analysis. So we will talk only about this part. And uh, there are a few interfaces which we are going to demonstrate. So first of all, direct interfaces. There is an API pretty much uh, where we can call uh, MATLAB, uh, Simulink, Wolfram, Modelica, Maple. Those tools have the very good APIs, right? A very fast API. So for example, you can call MATLAB API, which will give you response like in a thousand times per minute, right? So you can use any function of MATLAB. And then uh, we will show also FMI, functional mockup interface, which is supported now, I guess, by 120 companies the last time we checked. Uh, and then we can export fun functional mockup unit executable part of the uh, model from different tools and then import to the SysML for using this uh, interface. Then we don't need direct interface, right? So we can pretty much uh, uh, leverage this opportunity. And then we will talk about the third interface, but I will not demonstrate because it is not yet released. It will be going to release in uh, two weeks. I will talk about it a little bit later. So uh, uh, when we import those uh, uh, executable models uh, or call directly interface in an external tool, we can uh, call it through a uh, few diagrams. We can call it through parametric diagram, internal block diagram, or activity diagram, or state machine also, pretty much. So on entry the state, we can execute this model. And then, you know, SysML is uh, for architectures, for abstract models creation, right? So uh, system uh, description, and then once we want to do like different trade-offs, we can use existing physical models, uh, from those uh, detailed analysis tools, uh, simulation tools, and then we can drag and drop and then run one alternative, another alternative compare. So we will even demonstrate this in the demo. And uh, this execution uh, happens not by accident, really SysML is not uh, by itself executable, but there are standards which uh, makes it executable. And uh, with the help of a simulation toolkit, which is actually gathers those standards together, like uh, 
FUML for activities and uh, state machine execution connected together and uh, action scripts for different scripting languages like Groovy, Ruby, uh, and uh, Python, and then uh, composite structure, parametric uh, sequence diagram execution. All of them work together like as best uh, evaluators for each diagram. And when you model your system, you can run, and uh, if it is using uh, executable part of the SysML, pretty much you will see that it executes, and you see that uh, the model is as you expected, right? And then you, if you will put additional details, you can do analysis, for example, Monte Carlo analysis, duration analysis, if you have constraints. And this is used uh, widely and gets uh, more adopted uh, with the adoption of SysML. Now, in this demo, we will demonstrate a theoretical missile system, and we will do trade-off analysis. We will import a, a MATLAB model, uh, and uh, not to import, but actually we will drag and drop MATLAB file to get the call of the function of the MATLAB, and also we will drag and drop FMU to go get the call of FMU. The same uh, analysis, just like different standards used to do this, uh, this uh, uh, integration. So we will demonstrate that, uh, first of all, we have architecture in the SysML, we have properties, and then the analysis model will be used to calculate uh, based on the system airframe size, uh, uh, amount of the fuel, uh, what is the distance, how far the missile can fly. The analytical model will be in those other tools. And they will run in the background. Oh, FMU runs by itself, you know, it's executable uh, exported once you export from that tool. So we will do uh, analytical model integration through parametric diag diagram, Modelica, MATLAB, FMU. So we will use just MATLAB and FMU, but Modelica could be used. Instance uh, we will use to input different configurations. And uh, then we will use automatic requirements verification through the natural language. So pretty much you have the text and it can be converted to constraint automatically uh, based on patterns. And then you get constraint on the property which satisfies this requirement. All those uh, presented capabilities, they already exist. It's most of them, actually all of them, I think for many years and uh, they are used. It's not like some kind of, you know, prototype or something which is, uh, you know, like considered maybe not safe to use, maybe it's corruption or something. It's like very stable and uh, so. So here we see missile system trade-off analysis. We see the sample. Uh, then system architecture is here. We see missile system. It consists of those uh, parts here. And then we have requirement which is satisfied the fly distance property. And then you see here that underlying text is pretty much converted to the constraint. If we change the text, it automatically changes the constraint because it is a runtime constraint. It is not physically available. Now we will move mouse over and we will see that requirements change, change the constraint. Maybe I press the pause. Give a second, yeah. We still have some time. So here we see that now constraint is different, right? So pretty much there is 50 rules and you can customize them, how the, what text is converted to what type of the expression. And then we will import MATLAB to parametric diagram. So we'll drag and drop M file and that's enough to get a function call, right? So no, then uh, next uh, you see that parameters got uh, created automatically and the call of the function is here. Next, we can invoke the mapping dialog, and then we can map to system properties the properties of the analysis file. By, by default, it's name by name mapped, right? But we can change the mapping because, you know, property names could be different than, than uh, we have an analytical file. We can drag and drop from one side to another side to have uh, mapping done. And then once we click OK, parametric diagram gets created. So we no longer need to do this manually. And also, we can. Uh, repeat the process many times so we can type some another expression here and then click OK and then it will be added to the same parametric diagram. So the layout is gets updated automatically. We can uh, pretty much uh, uh, use it. It's not bad uh, layout. 
And then here we see that uh, now we started this execution and MATLAB uh, is started in the background. So it takes some time to start first time, but next it will be very fast. So now we will see that uh, we can change the inputs here. And then we change the inputs, the result of flies distance will be recalculated. So we change the diameter property. Every time we change the input and parametric diagram, it goes to this uh, external uh, tool, uh, gets the result and pass back result here and we see that the result gets updated. So again, uh, this interface is fast. This is a headless mode of MATLAB running behind. It is, uh, uh, works uh, extremely fast. Uh, not that we need to do this uh, integration for every type of analysis. There is built-in math engine, but you know, still. So now we have a FMU import. You see that again, drag and drop of FMU file. We got a block created and then we do the mapping. So we did the mapping and now we can run again the same, uh, same model and you see that the result is same. So the same logic was just different, uh, different type of the uh, tool. Now we will go next step, we will execute behavior of the system. So we will go through the states of the system. So system has states, turn off, initializing, waiting for launch and then flying to target. And then if target is reached, it uh, goes to one state. If target is not reached, it goes to another state. We go through those uh, states and uh, the idea here is that in right state we start different kind of behaviors. And then behavior, especially is on the flying in target uh, state, uh, it decreases the fuel level. So we have percentage of the fuel, so every time when uh, some time pass on that state, uh, we have another behavior running like activity, it decreases the fuel level and we monitor, you know, how that goes system in the progress. The fuel level decrease automatically updates the parametric uh, diagram uh, property and then we get, uh, you know, analysis updated. Here we also see that when we execute behavior, you can always trace that in a state uh, sequence diagram. We can auto generate sequence diagram during execution. This is just like right click and say, show me sequence diagram. Every call, the signal, property update, state change will be recorded. And here we see those properties updated because every second fuel level is decreased and distance is decreased. Next, we will go to see an activity diagram what's happening here. Because uh, on the state, we don't see that, but actually uh, on the state, uh, we, we see that the activity diagram is running. Every second, it decreases the fuel level. Decrease the fuel level and then decision, at the, on the decision here, we see that uh, we check uh, what is the distance to the target. If it is uh, less than five uh, uh, kilometers, uh, uh, we will go to one state. If it, until that, we will continue looping. And uh, we wait for the <coughs> signal to come that target got uh, recognized. Until the target got recognized signal comes, we will loop. But we will loop only until the fuel level will be more than five. Uh, fuel, the distance will be more than five. So the distance is actually a result of that analysis and fuel level is input to analysis. So we see that it's actually updating the analytical, uh, getting results from an analytical model. Now next uh, thing is to do is actually we will store the uh, system configuration to the instance. So we right click on the runtime uh, uh, instance of the system here with what we see in the simulation dialog and we create an instance of the whole system. So all the properties were created and now we show that in instance table. So instance table is convenient because it can show only the right things what we need. Only the right properties we see as the columns. And also you see that in instance table we see the red uh, color as the no satisfied requirements. Here what we can see that we have airframe variants A, B, C with different properties. So now we will use those variants uh, to compare between uh, different configurations and uh, we will show how to change the variance. So here we will remove the generic airframe, remove values, and then right click and we will pick specific airframe. So we will pick specific airframe which will load uh, that airframe and we will get the system uh, analysis updated automatically but also we will get configuration of that system. So there could be many alternatives, right? Many generalizations of different components. We can configure it here and save to instance as we will do. 
and then uh, go to instance table. And we will see in instance table pretty much two columns which we care about. One is the uh, which configuration of the airframe was selected, and another one the flight distance. So now we see that with which configuration was what flight distance, and we can uh, compare which one is, was the best by sorting by that property. Could be many characteristics, you know, and then some kind of function which will calculate the best one uh, based on those characteristics. So that was the demo. And uh, we see that uh, with the simulation, you can uh, do analysis. You can uh, check the system works as you expected. You can integrate uh, analytical models, physical models through FMUs. Uh, and in the future, we plan to uh, release the integration with the Simulink and Modelica languages through the standard, new standard, OMG SysFys standard which coming in uh, two weeks already, release of 19 service pack two. This will be another standard. I will talk a little bit later about this. And then uh, also we plan a FMU generation uh, uh, from SysML with cost simulation API already exists. Uh, uh, and then uh, in, we plan also integration with 3D experience platform uh, for continuous development, integration, verification, and optimization. This. Uh, Standard, which I mentioned, that another one uh, for the integration with analytical models, this is actually a big deal because uh, uh, OMG and uh, experts mapped uh, SysML with Simulink and Modelica languages. Those are different languages. They did that mapping. And then uh, now we can implement integration. Then we convert from the SysML, let's say, to Simulink. And then in Simulink, we can do detailed model of, let's say, controller and then use Simulink capabilities to export, for example, to embedded systems, right, uh, the code. We don't need the, uh, to do this in SysML, but we can continue to the, what people uh, uh, already used to do in Simulink, right? So we can have that traceability. And uh, this will be export to block definition diagram, IBD state machines parametric from those diagrams to Modelica and Simulink. So that's it. Uh, and questions are after that, after the next presentation. Thank you very much.